You know, what up, guys? I'm here with my boy, John Kiggins. Uh, how you doing? I'm good, G-Love. How are you? Good, good. You want to tell me about yourself? So, uh, as, as G-Love mentioned, I'm John Kiggins. I'm the boys varsity basketball coach over at St. John's Prep High School. Uh, and also, for three years, I put together a professional team in the TBT tournament called Gale Nation. Uh, which consisted of uh, former Iona and uh, former NBA players in which we competed for $2 million. And that is a little bit about myself. What about you, G-Love? Everybody knows who I am. You know, I don't got to <laughs> introduce myself. I let's love go, it. I love it. Let's think about St. John's Prep, obviously, you know. One of my, my, my boys play, you know, Stavros, Pavlo, Pavlo they, they play there. But tell us a little bit about, like, your position. I know you're a teacher there. Tell yeah, about that, how you got the job and how you got into basketball. Yeah, so I've been I've been ingrained in basketball since I was a child. My mom played Division One basketball at Fairfield University. Oh, uh, my grandpa ended up coaching uh, Manhasset High School. Uh, my dad and my mom both coached me and, and raised me on it. My brother currently plays Division One at Bryant University. Um, I worked for the, the basketball team at Iona College. I was a student manager uh, for, for my four years there. Uh, and then once leaving, uh, I started coaching a third and a fifth grade AAU team. And I came across St. John's Prep one day when I was coaching at Island Garden. Uh, I was coaching against the great Bill Matsiratana. And for those of you who don't know who Bill Matsiratana is, he was the coach at Half Hollow Hills with Tobias Harris, Tavon Sledge, and the great teams in Long Island. Um, coaching against him, he had a student athlete, a former player of his that was coaching at St. John's Prep and needed a JV coach and asked if I'd be interested. I said, absolutely. He gave me this, uh, his former player's number. I went out to the parking lot, called immediately, had an interview uh, the next week and, and was hired to be assistant varsity coach. Uh, and then uh, thereafter, uh, Coach Camus, who was, who was there at the time, uh, left uh, to pursue other things. And, and I was named head coach and, and have kind of been there ever since. Uh, a year after I was head coach, I was hired as the dean of students. Uh, at the school uh, for all grades. And it's practically been my second home ever since. And that is now four years later. So this is going to be my fifth year as varsity head coach. Um, each year we've been getting better and better. My first year we started with eight wins and we ended up the following year with 13 wins and in in a loss in the semifinal game. It's a COVID year in which we didn't have a year and to this past year where we finished the year with uh, 17 wins and, and lost in the championship game and a great game to Cathedral Prep. And hopefully this year uh, we end up winning the whole thing. So I'll be very happy. Uh, and I know that we're going to have a good team. And I know that we're going to have really good opportunity to go back to uh, the championship and, and, and see where things go from there. Sure. Hopefully you're not the Buffalo Bills, you know, get, keep going to the chip <laughs> and lose. But uh, yeah, that, that, that would, I don't know. I don't know how, uh, how much hair I would have if that was the case. I don't know. Uh, you know, how many years of my life would also be taken off too. So I, I really hope that that's not the case. That would be, that would be very upsetting. This is one of the great teams. They learn from the championship experience. They move, move on. And I believe that with you guys, I think you guys could uh, pull through for yeah. sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's been interesting, right? So my first year when we were, when I was assistant coach there, we ended up with uh, two wins. We lost every game by, it felt like a billion points. Um, didn't necessarily have, um, the greatest basketball players, but we had a lot of great kids that worked really hard um, and wanted to get better. And I feel as though uh, having another year with those kids, we would have we would have done a lot better. Uh, things were clicking to the end, uh, towards the end, and then we were really starting to hit our stride. Unfortunately, we we played the top team in the playoffs and, and um, didn't you know lose by a billion. We actually I think lost by ten. You know we were in the game the whole time. Uh, so then the following year, you know, kind of starting from right after when the year ended with open gyms and, and getting guys in the gym and, and learning how to win. And I think that that's the biggest key in any sport, but more, you know, in particular with high school sports, um, you know, during the during the COVID year, we weren't able to have anything in New York City with, with all the restrictions that were put in place. Um, and with that being said, you know, our team that went to the semifinals all graduated and we basically had to bring in uh, 15 new guys that had never played varsity before in their lives. Right. We started last year, zero and eight, and it was a process of the first couple of games playing really good double A teams, 
you know, them being a lot more talented than us and us trying to still mesh and, 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 and get together to slowly getting in games where had we had that little bit of a um, winning mindset and winning pedigree at the time, we probably would have pulled out some victories, but lost a couple games at the end, one by a buzzer beater, one by, you know, a mistake, a mental mistake towards the end of the game. And we kind of said in the locker room after that final game when we turned 0 and 8, you know, once we win, once we get a win under our belt, um, we're really going to turn things around. And we won the next day by 25, and then we went on a nine-game win streak. And it was just an absolute heater. But it was kind of one of those things where learning to win was part of our process in order for us to be great. And it took it took eight games. And sometimes it takes a long time for us for us to to learn how to win, um, especially in the team setting. Uh, and especially in high school sports, because there are no gimmies, there are no cupcakes. Everybody's there to play hard. You know, you, you can you can book a team that you feel as though you could beat by a million points. But on any given night that it could be their night and hit a ton of shots. So high school sports is definitely um, interesting. And it's something that, um, you know, I love being a part of. And I've been so fortunate and thankful and blessed to be a part of it for now. This going on my fifth year uh, as head coach, but six years uh, overall. It's awesome. High school is like the best experience. I always tell everybody the best experience better than college. I always tell everybody that. Like you said, it, it's a... It's uh, definitely you have to build over time for that chemistry builds time. Like even like going to the movies or going, going out to eat, that usually makes a difference in, in the team. I tell, I tell them, you know, I coach JV soccer and I tell, I tell my players, go hang out, go, go do something afterwards. You guys are a team. You guys should be hanging out all the time. Yeah, yeah and, 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 it, and it's something that can't be forced, right? So with your JV soccer team, with my varsity basketball team, you know, you could you could say until you're blue in the face, you know, the key to this year is going to be chemistry and, and making sure that you guys hang out and, and you could organize all the events, but that doesn't mean that everyone's going to follow through, right? It has to be genuine. It has to be one of those things where everybody wants to be a part of something greater than themselves and, and want to be a part of a – winning culture, championship culture. You know, when you mention family, how everyone says, oh, we're a family, we're a family. Well, if that's going to be the case, you have to make sure that you're doing the steps and putting yourselves in a position where um, that that word family is, is being used, not as a just, oh, we're just saying it to say it, but uh, we actually mean it, right? I'm there for the guys to the left of me, the guys to the right of me. You know, I'm making sure that whatever happens, I have his back no matter what. For sure, I agree, 100%. That's, that's the way to go, for sure. What's your like fa- favorite team that you coach? Do you have a favorite team, favorite moment, or anything like that? Favorite from- team that I coached. Um, that's a, that's a good one, and it, and it's kind of tough because each team is is unique in its own way. You know, I I, I feel I feel like I had uh, a lot of fun coaching. You know, the third, the fifth graders. Um, reason being, every day they came in wanting to get better. Right, there was never anything about Oh, I don't want to go to practice day because I have this or that. Um, so that was interesting. The high school teams have been unbelievable. You know, for us at, at St. John's Prep, and obviously I'm sure it goes across the board uh, everywhere else, you know, we're spending, you know, five months together nonstop every single day practically, right? And you form a lot of relationships and a lot of bonds with, with guys on the team, you know, that, that you're fortunate enough to have and, and you create lifelong memories, right? There are times that we've gone on games that I'll never forget a, a lot of the things that we've had. And then, and then finally, you know, it was really cool being able to put together, um, you know, the professional team and being able to coach guys that, that had played in the NBA um, and, and things like that. So, you know, if, if I have to say if I'm, if I'm going to put something together that's that's memorable, I'm going to go with that just because that's probably a once in a lifetime experience that I was able to have. And I was fortunate enough to have it for three years. Uh, and some of those games that we played were absolutely incredible. They were just, you know, you thought we would lose. You thought we would win. We find a way to either come back or blow it uh, and, then, and then make it a competitive game at the end. So. I mean, those those games were some of the most um, memorable ones for sure. I still talk about it with all all my friends and, and all the guys who are on the team till this day. Um, you know, whenever we get together about uh, TBT, so you know, it, it it spans across three different levels. There's three different kinds of uh, personalities, I guess that 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 go with it. Where you have uh, kids that are trying to learn the game to high schoolers that 
that understand the game that may need to get things together uh, to pros that, 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 that's their livelihood. You know, that's, that's what they do for a living. Their, their job is playing professional basketball. So um, I would definitely have to say the TBT stuff was probably some of my favorite memories. You coach NBA players. I want to know who would you coach? So I coached uh, Scott Machado. He played with the Warriors, he played with the Rockets for a few years. Uh, most recently he was uh, towards the end of, the 2018-19 season, I believe it was. He was with the, on a 10-day with the Lakers. Another one is Gary Forbes. Uh, he played with the Raptors and he played with the Nuggets. Um, you know, so so guys like that uh, who, who, had, who had a little NBA experience, which is unbelievable. So it's interesting listening to their stories in the league. Uh, one of the more me- notable guys also uh, was at the time, I don't believe he's the number two leading scorer in St. John's University history now, but it was D'Angelo Harrison. Um, he was another guy that played for me. So he's another very notable name. So th- those were the kind of guys that, that we had. And, and we played against Syracuse and some of their better players, you know, from the past couple of years uh, as well. So, you know, those, those games were always interesting to say the least. So uh, you got to tell everybody, uh, how'd you get them? Obviously know each other for the Mets, right? You yeah. Know each other. So you got to tell all the fans out there, how, how'd you get the position? That happened. Yeah, so I, uh, I've been in, in, in Fan Fest since the 2013 season. One of the, somebody who was uh, in the production office had uh, approached um, uh, my dad about if he knew anybody who was college age that'd be interested in the job, and my dad said, "Yeah, uh, my son, I think would be interested." So uh, I got connected with with productions, and, and they put me in, and it's, I've been there ever since. Um, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to 2013 was when the Mets hosted the all-star game. So I was fortunate enough to work the all-star game, uh, 2015, obviously when they were in the world series, I was able to go to the world series games and playoff games and be able to work, uh, which was unbelievable. Um, 2016, I didn't get to work the wild card game. Um, but you know, that was another great season. Um, you know, but, but, but fan fest and, and you can talk obviously on this as well. It's a place where, you know, you have a lot of people, um, who are good, genuine people who, who care about each other. Um, it makes going to city field fun. It makes going to work fun. Um, you know, as, as we have our group chat, that's got 30 plus people in it. Um, you know, every day is an adventure and every day I look forward to, to going to fan fest. So, you know, the year 10, I guess that is now, if you count the seasons, uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't picture myself not working there, um, which is great, but it's just a testament to, to the people that I work with, um, which, which makes, you know, going there so much fun and, and so great. I would say. Do so you have like a favorite memory since you've been there so long or favorite memory? Yeah, I would say my favorite memory was uh, they used to have um, a Ford race uh, around the outfield. And one day somebody needed, uh, the Perk Patrol needed uh, a person to help out because somebody had called out. I said, I'll, I'll do it. And for that day, I got to race around the field in the Ford truck, kind of like one of those uh, like pedal bikes. So I got to race around the outfield. I, I lost barely. Um, but then I also got to shoot t-shirts out with Mr. Met. So I, I had to keep feeding his, uh, cannon, which was great. And I got to, I think I tossed a shirt to Bartolo Colon, which was awesome. Um, that was probably one of the coolest memories I had was being able to do that contest. I wish I would have won, but that's okay. I, I gave, I gave it my all. That's all that mattered. <laughs> yeah. That's all that matters. Right. You know, all right. Let's go to everybody's favorite round, the quick fire round. You okay. Ready? I'm ready. I'm good. Start from my my personal favorite. Your favorite commercial. Favorite commercial. Uh, gotta be the early two thousands Bud Light commercials during the Super Bowl. Yes. Um, if I have to pick one, do I have to pick one? Yeah, yeah. That's gotta be the uh the the Budweiser uh what's up commercial when they all go what's up. It's gotta be that one for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Favorite athlete of all time. Favorite athlete of all time. Uh. Mm. Favorite athlete of all time? Uh, I got to say Michael Jordan. Yes, yeah, it's a good one. I go MJ. Favorite favorite team is it the Mets or you got another team? No, it's the Mets. It's the Mets. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, when it comes to pro sports, I'm all in on the Mets. When it comes to college sports, it's uh, it's Iona College. Favorite TV show? Uh, favorite TV show of all time or currently? You can give me both. 
So of all time, it's 24. Uh, that's what Kiefer Sutherland and Jack Bauer. Currently, I'm, I, I, I got to say, I, I really like when the Impractical Jokers is on. I could, I could put that on and I've seen an episode, but I'll still watch it. I think that that's a, a top notch show. Yeah, it's not the same with Joe, man. He can't. I know. I know. It's, it's upsetting. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I saw him around where I live uh, a few weeks ago. I have to. I have to see if if this is uh, if he relocated here because I'm 99 percent sure I saw him. But yeah, so you gotta let me know. I will. I will. Me, me, and you can go and try to scout him. Yeah, yeah. Favorite color. Uh, favorite color red. Red storm. Favorite cereal. Uh, special K. Pretty, pretty, pretty plain Jane. Favorite ice cream? What would you put on it? Uh, vanilla with a cherry. Finish off with everyone's favorite question. Are you ready? All right, let's see it. Who's your celebrity crush? <laughs> my celebrity crush. Uh, who's my celebrity crush? I'll keep it in the basketball world. I'll go Kelsey Plum. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, John, thank you for coming on. Is there anything you want to wrap off with before we end the episode? Uh, I'd just like to congratulate you officially on your uh, employee of the month at thank City you. Field for September. I'm super pumped Appreciate about that. It. And I'm looking forward to having you on my team at the, uh, at the Fan Fest softball game. Oh, uh, I'm on the t- I'm on your team. What you're on my team, so I really, oh, I really hope, I really hope that you know your uh, your college athletic background uh, leads up, leads us to a win. Um, and and I and I have no doubt in my mind that 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 it it, it will. So I'm I'm very excited for that as well. Uh, where where can people find you? Uh, my you can find me on Twitter. It's at uh, sjpadkiggins uh, or on Instagram jkiggins8. Uh, and I usually post a lot of our basketball content on there. So anytime or anywhere that anybody wants to go to a game or, or find out where uh, the Red Storm are playing, that's 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 where you're going to find it uh, on the social media handles. And links in the description if you want to link up with John. And uh, uh, thanks for coming. I'll see you in a splash. All right, buddy. I'll see you soon.